Hi, I'm Francisco Servent. I'm the attorney at Keystone Law Firm. And I want to explain something about how you pick a person to take care of your financial affairs. Um, there's two time periods. You have to pick somebody who's going to take care of things if you're still alive, but you can't take care of things uh, at that point because you're incapacitated or you're incompetent. Um, so somebody's going to need to be legally designated there to take care of your financial matters. And you're also going to need to designate someone to help wind up all of your financial affairs uh, after you pass away. Now, that person is called a few different things depending on what role they're acting in. Uh, they're a personal representative here in Arizona if they are executing the terms of your last will and testament. They are a trustee or a successor trustee if they are uh, implementing the terms of your revocable living trust. And um, they can also be called the agent under a power of attorney. Now, when you're naming that person, there are a whole bunch of things you need to consider uh, to decide who's the right fit for that, per for that job. And a few of the really important elements you want to think about, obviously you want to name somebody who is trustworthy, who you actually trust uh, with your own money. I mean, would you trust them uh, if they took out over the job right now? And if the answer is no or maybe not, you probably don't want to uh, give them this job when you're not a available to oversee or watch them, right? So they have to be trustworthy. Uh, second, it's helpful if they're located uh, geographically close to you. That's not really required, but if you have the choice between two otherwise good options and one is uh, located close to you, you know, the one who's nearby can, can react quicker. So maybe you think about uh, geography. Uh, you might also be considering naming uh, an independent third party like a, a professional trust company or a licensed fiduciary. Um, you can do that and they are incredibly valuable. What we found in a lot of cases is that when you name somebody who's independent, uh, they can be very useful when there might be a little bit of disagreement among uh, your beneficiaries and how you are uh, going to distribute, how you're structuring your affairs. But it can also, uh, that independent third party can also act as the, the bad guy in a sense. So if you have any experience with, with what it's like wrapping up the affairs after somebody passes away, it can be a little bit of a delayed process. It doesn't happen immediately. And if you've put one person who's a family member in that role, a lot of times the other family members might be looking at them and thinking, what is taking you so long? And it kind of it can create a little division. But if you name a an uh, independent third party who nobody knows, then uh, when it is taking a little bit longer and longer and longer to get things wrapped up, it, instead of your family being divided over that, the family is sort of grouped over here looking at this third party saying, what's taking you so long? So in a way it can kind of unify your family. Um, so there's some important things to consider. We help our clients uh, decide what the best uh, person is for that role uh, using you know, all the experience, all the times we've been through this and implemented different documents. When the time has come, we've seen the different outcomes. And uh, we want your decision on, on that role to be really the best person to take care of you and to take care of your family when you're not able to.